Yes, you are welcome to another Sunday. Today is the 17th day in the month of May 2020. We appreciate God for leading us thus far. And we pray the Lord will give us a great in Jesus' name. In spite of all that is happening in our nation, pray the Lord will uphold us. He keep us and preserve us. Looking at what is happening in our nation today, I think the word of encouragement we have for us as Christians is taken from the book of First Corinthians chapter 9. I will read from verse 24 to 27. And it reads us from the NIFA fashion. Do you not know that in a race all the runners run? But only one gets the prize. Run in such a way as to get the prize. Let me emphasize that. Run in such a way as to get the prize. Everyone who competes in the games goes into strict training. They do it to get a crown that will not last. But we do it to get a crown that will last forever. Therefore, I do not run like a man, running aimlessly. I do not fight like a man, beating the air. No, I beat my body and make it my slave, so that after I preach to others, I myself will not be disqualified for the price. May we not be disqualified for the price in Jesus' name. Apostle Paul has actually uh, likened life and Christian race to athletic competition in the passage that we have read here. And we know that all athletes, they compete and the aim of their competition is to win the prize. I don't know how many of us in life as a goal, you have a target, you have a dream, you have a vision you want to achieve. But I want to tell you that in spite of all your aim and your vision, challenges will come. Oh, our world is full of challenges. One of the uh, way we can run to win the prize is what we consider this morning, and that's why we are considering the topic as a fear in the face of challenges. As a fear in, in the face of challenges. I want to assure you that challenges will come. No wonder Jesus Christ was telling disciples, say, I have told you to have your peace in me. Because in the world, you will find troubles. But be of good cheers. I have overcome the world. So if we are sure that challenges will come, then for us as Christians, all we needed to do is to persevere so that we can win the prize. So that we will not be a castaway. Perseverance is a proof of our genuineness of faith. Those that are not persevere are the ones that want to do it anyhow. They want to take shortcuts. In fact, they cannot. Uh, run the Christian race the way it ought to be run. I want to assure you with all the problems we have in our world today, with all manners of uh, unemployment and unemployment, with business challenges, with all manners of sicknesses, there's one that we are just passing through, and that's COVID-19 pandemic. That will be our mission. Oh, I want to tell you that even many people are failing in school. Many cannot get, get admission. If you want to do it the way of the world, you want to look for shortcuts for you to have your way. But Paul was trying to encourage the Christians to run the race in a way to win the prize. I pray we shall all win in the name of Jesus. In fact, that being described, they said that to pacify means to continue to, to try until you achieve something in spite of difficulties. That is, is a matter of you trying and trying and trying until you are able to win, until you are able to achieve. That's what it means to pass a fear. I want to tell you even why Jesus Christ was talking to the uh, disciples. He encouraged them that they need to pass a fear if they will need to win the prize. Let me just read to us again uh, from the book of Mark, chapter 13, verse 13. Do you know what he says? He says, All men will take you, will hate you because of me, but he who stand firm to the end will be saved. So salvation is only for those who are able to persevere. You will believe in the Jesus Christ. Persecution will come. Hatred will come. But if you can stand firm to the end, that's when your salvation is secured. So I want to assure you, 
that the only way that we can make it in life is to pass a fear. If not, you may run the race, but you will not win the prize. I pray we all win in the name of Jesus. In fact, while in the book of Acts, we are told that anyone that we actually enter into the kingdom of God, we have to do what? We have to also uh, uh, go through hardship to enter into the kingdom of God. So, if you have to go through hardship, then there is no gain saying, instead of otherwise, but we must know that the only way that we can actually win the prize and enter the kingdom of God and actually achieve as Christians is to pass the fear. To pass the fear, particularly in the face of challenges that we have. No wonder you find people who are taking shortcuts. I wonder how many uh, how many jobs will you quit when you are in encounter with difficulty? I want to ask you again. Maybe you encounter one challenge in one business and you are living in that. You want to go and try another one. The only thing that you can do is to pass a fear on that one and be determined. And that is the only way that you can achieve. If you fail, you are going to be perfected. And when you are perfected, you are going to achieve. And you get to the end of it. Oh, no wonder you find some people who are failing, failing their examination. And until they, they can pass a fear, they can try again and again. That when success is assured. And I want to just find out, I, I, I try to make investigation, why are people feeling? Or why can't people persevere to actually win the prize the way that we uh, have just had? Somebody was trying to share his testimony of how he started the ministry. And in the ministry, other people are making it. And he thought, how can he actually make it in life when he can no longer persevere? He decided to do otherwise, to look for shortcuts. And the first reason I want to give this morning is that when you have personal desire for prosperity, oh, no other scripture says there are so many people that enter, eh, that want to get rich. So you enter into many temptations. If your desire to get rich, by all means, I want to assure you that there's no way you can pacify. You have to enter into so many temptations that come across your way. May the Lord help us to overcome in the name of Jesus. One other thing, one other reason why I believe that people cannot persevere because of worry and anxieties. Jesus let us, how many of you, out of your worry and anxiety, can have a cubit to your life? He says that if uh, we, we desire to uh, to, to have anxiety to, to have anxiety about our life we cannot add one minute we cannot add one second we cannot add one hour to our life lifetime so then why do we need not to, uh, to, to be anxious of life why can't we just wait on God and allow him even to help us one other thing I see as one of the ways that we uh, listen why people don't pass fear is laziness Oh, no wonder the book of Proverbs says, go to the ants, O you laggard. Listen, people, go to the ants. They are no commander, they are no captain. And yet, they are chief. And yet, they make Why? Because they pass a fear. They continue with determination. And until they're able to do the work, they're able to achieve, that's the only time that they will be what? That's the only time they know that they have achieved. And one other thing I see, as one of the reasons why people cannot pass a fear because of trials of life. The way I said it before, book of John, uh, John chapter 16, verse 3, you know Christ assures us that in this life we find trouble. There are, there are troubles in the, in the world, but more pure which are because we overcome the world. So definitely, trials will come. The future will come. But only those who pass a fear are the ones that will win the race. And one other thing I see, as one of the reasons why people cannot pass a fear is because of the first teaching that is ongoing in our world today. No wonder we come back chapter 13. Let me just read verse 23 to us. John, uh, uh, book of Mark chapter 13, verse 23. Okay, let me read from verse 22. It says, For first Christ and first prophet who will appear and perform signs and miracles to deceive the elect if that were possible. 
So be on your guard. I've told you everything ahead of time. So we have so many teachers, and in the same way, we have so many listeners who are listening up uh, teachers for their itching ears. And because of that, they are not ready even to listen to the word of God, but they are ready to do things in their own way. And these are the reasons. But according to the passage that we have read, uh, he encouraged us that if we want to persevere, there are some things that we needed to, to be done. And let's go back to the passage we read from the book, uh, book of 1 Corinthians chapter 9. Uh, and I think let, looking at how we can pacify to win the race, the first thing that we can see, okay, let's do fast 24 again. It says, Do not know that in a race all runners run, run run, but only one gets the prize. Run in such a way as to gain the prize. The that says, Everyone who competes in the games goes into strict training. They do it to get the crown that will not last, but we do it to get the crown that will last forever. So the first thing I believe we must do to run the race is to run straight to the goal. You have your goal. Your goal in life will be the eternal life. That is the sense of your coming to the world. That when you are not all, you are able to win the goal. You are able to win the prize. I pray you will not lose the prize in the name of Jesus. What is your goal in life as well? Pertaining to your profession. What's the way life happening to your family? Oh, I, I just consider so many uh, individuals so that cannot keep a home because they cannot pass a fear. Oh, they keep on changing uh, spouses because they cannot pass a fear. I, I see some students whom God actually want to elevate, but because of one hardship or the other in the profession they are choosing, because they are choosing, they cannot pass a fear and they begin to change course one after the other. These ones, but according to the, the passage, let's all run straight to the goal. God has given us a road, a goal. So if you want to actually win the prize, you must run in the way. And the way of running is to have a focus. You have a goal where you are going. Secondly, the verse 25 is the one that is telling us that it says that I uh, that I keep on disciplining myself. That that means the second thing is that we have to discipline ourselves. This discipline oneself. Discipline, we said that is of two uh, uh, variants. And the first one is you trying to keep under control yourself. You are the one who is giving control to yourself. You are the one who is, uh, who is training yourself in the way of the Lord. And that's what Paul decided to do. He says that I keep say everyone who competes in the game goes into strict training. Nobody forcing him. You see the, the footballers, you see the athletes, by 4 years, 5 years, they are on, they are on the field. And we are till 11 or 12 uh, uh, noon. They are still training. They are still uh, trying to exercise. They are still going through it, do it this way, do it the other way, until they are able to perfect it. And that's what we ought to do. That is pacifying. So anyone that wants to pacify to win, will be ready to do what? To train himself, to be able to discipline himself, to be able to subject himself. Remember the story of the, uh, the uh, fisherman boy that I told you some time ago. That this boy, because he was there, he was being trained for, to, to, to dive and to swim in the stream for many hours, for about 12 hours. And one day when the, the, their boat capsided on the way to the market, every other, one, every other person in the boat were drawn. But by the 10th hour, that when those who had to save them came, it was only one that was left. Because of what? Because he has actually subjected himself to training. He had been trained for long. He had been to pass a fear. He had been to endure. He was able to win. We pray that God will help us also to do in the name of Jesus. I want to encourage us to train in godliness. Things that are godly. That's what God is, that's what God is from us. When we don't do things that are godly, then uh, we will be disqualified in the race that been marked for us. I'm going through even the writing of Paul in the book of Ephesians chapter uh, 6. He, he gave us even some tips on how to win the, the, the prize. Uh, in first, uh, 10, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10, So finally be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. And that's he put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's scheme. So one of the ways that we can pacify is to put on the whole armor of God. 
the full armor of God. That's what we need. If actually we want to we fight the, the, the battle of life and win, then then we have an armor. You cannot use the armor of the world. Hey, remember the story of David? When he was to go and fight the liars, they gave him even an armor to put on. The armor of the king. But he said, no, I'm not used to this. He, uh, David had a different armor. And that's the protection of God. He said, I'm going to fight these Goliaths eh? with the armor of God in the name of the Lord. The armor of God we need is the name of the Lord to actually cover us and to protect us. We pray the Lord will help us even to stand with that name and win the battle in the name of Jesus. Reading further in the, the, uh, the same passage where we now see in verse 14. He said, We must do what? We must stand firm with the head, the belt. Uh, with the belt of truth buckled around our, our, our waist. That means to actually win the battle of life, for you to, to pass a fear, you must stand firm in righteousness. When you are doing something right, God will fight your battle. God will be by your side. But when you, uh, you are compromising, the God, is, God is going to leave you alone. That you think you can do it your own way. So for you to win the battle of life, no matter the problem, no matter the challenge, let's do it God's own way. For the fact that you are sick, does not mean you are going to die. That sickness will not kill you. You not die. You will not die prematurely in the name of Jesus. But you don't need to go and bend, to, to go and bow to any idol or to any other person more than to bow before the Lord. Worship the Lord and know that He is one who has your life. So let us do it God's own way. And when you do it God's own way, He is the one that is going to defend you. He will heal you. He will set you free. He will liberate you. And so shall it be in the name of Jesus. And when we now go further again in verse 16, that he said, in addition, you take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the fear, flame, uh, flaming arrow of the evil one. So what we need here is you take up the shield of faith. You must believe God. Believe God and His word. The promise He has for you, you are here and amen. What He said He will do, He will do. Believe God totally. Somebody was trying to share the other time. He says, the way they always fool people is that you ask them to go and bring water. And you believe that because they have brought the water to him, he has put something there. He gives the water, the water back to them again. He says, go and bow with it when you get back home. And when you go for that interview, you will, uh, you will succeed. When you go to that, that business, you will win. And by the time they bow with the other water they brought, they will come back with their symphony. That is what has happened. It's just fooling people. So what you just need is a faith in God. So believe God. Trust Him. Pass in fear. Wait on Him. And He will give you sources. In the name of Jesus. The next thing, if we're according to that, is that we should take what? The helmet of our salvation. Don't forget your salvation. Salvation is what will take you to heaven. Without salvation, you are, you've lost all. What is of you are coming to the world? Oh, what is going to be the benefit? Even the, 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 the scripture has actually told us, it says, what is the benefit? If you get the whole world and you lose your soul, you will not lose our soul because of the things of the world in the name of Jesus. So let us take this element of our salvation very, very seriously because it is what is needed, what is required for us to actually win the price. We pray we shall not do that in the name of Jesus. And we continue there talking about the sword of the Spirit. So that is the next thing that helps us to persevere. When you have the sword of the Spirit, the Spirit is the Word of God. The, the Word of God is what will help us even to stand to the, the, the end because it's the Word contains the promises. His word will not return to him glory. Because he has sent it, he will to achieve what he has been sent to do. He will achieve it and come with testimony in the name of Jesus. And finally, in verse 18, say and pray in the Spirit on all locations with all kinds of prayers and requests. We must pray all manners of prayer, all kinds of prayer. Our prayer of supplication, our prayer of intercession. Let us pray and see what God is going to do. Let's pass in fear and prayer. Let's stand firm. Let's wait on Him. That's the only way that we can make it. And I pray we will not lose out in the name of Jesus. I, I want to encourage us that in life, there's definitely going to be a challenge. Like the one you are passing through. Is it sickness? Is it your marital challenge? Is it because of your future? Is it whatever problem you are passing through? Let's know that the only way out remain firm in God and it's going to help you. And I want to conclude with the rising of Paul to the Corinthians again chapter uh, 16. Let me just read verse 13. 
Say, be on your guard. Stand firm in the faith. Be man of courage. Be strong. Do everything in love. That's the only way out for you. Be on your guard. Be watchful. Watch what you do. Watch what you say. Watch where you go. Watch everything about you. Stand, stand firm. Don't let anything push you. Remain in God. Stand firm. Don't bend. Don't bend your faith. Don't compromise. I mean faith. It says stand firm in faith. It's faith, your faith in the Lord that is going to help you. Have faith in God and you'll be victorious. And you have to be men of courage. Be strong in the Lord and the Lord will help you. So as you are going, the Lord will grow with you. The Lord will help you. The Lord will assist you. As you are standing firm in Him and you are persevering, your victory shall come. And so shall it be. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen. Amen.